Hi everybody, it's Daryl again, and we're going to have to have a serious talk about this Auckland light rail tunneled option. I'm just going to say it straight up front, I think this plan is a terrible idea, and it's not because we don't need modern transport or anything like that. It's it's just building the wrong thing as one giant mega project when really what the thing that they need to build is several different things. And uh, it's that idea, it's, it's like this, you know, the Swiss Army knife that has um, 20 different things in it. It's got it's got a magnifying glass and tweezers and scissors and, and all of that. And it, what what is this thing for? It's an interesting tool that you can put everything into and you can buy it and it's expensive and it's cool to have, but it's not that practical. You know, m maybe it's just better to separate the things out into different projects. The, the main problem that I see is that it costs, I think the budget was $14 billion dollars. And it serves a couple of hundred thousand people uh, because it's one line that snakes through a big city and you still have to get to the tramway. It's a tramway. The Auckland Underground Light Rail is a tram. It's a modern tram. Okay, so that's, that's another point. It, it's cool because it swaps a lot of buses. You get rid of a lot of buses. You replace it with a modern electric tram. That's cool. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll break it down and I'll tell you what, what you really need. Uh, or, or this is Also, this is just my opinion, and you're free to uh, have other ideas. Write, write your ideas in the comments. The more information we all have, uh, the better it will be for people who make you pay for this. They'll have better ideas and they'll build the right thing straight off. So the whole, the whole project is... It's going to carry 15,000 people per hour and it allows, it's supposed to allow a connection down to the airport. Is that off the screen? Yes, it is. I'll adjust the window so you can see that. There we go. It, it, goes, it goes from the Wynyard Quarter and Aotea. That's the CBD of Auckland where all the high-rise buildings are. Universities that are also just in Auckland City. Kingsland, which is a suburban railway station on the Western Route Line. Um, Wesley, which is some suburban area. This area is the highest transported bus route in Auckland, which is why it makes sense to put a light rail there. It doesn't make sense to build a $10 billion tunnel to put the light rail in. That's, that's my major objection is just the cost. You could have three times as much public transport in light rail if you don't put it in a tunnel. And one of the major problems with light rail, when you put it in a tunnel, you lose all the flexibility. You can't change where the stops are or easily add extra stops. It's extremely expensive to build and it just leaves the car lanes on the surface uh, as an alternative for induced demand. What's further? It goes to Onihanga, that's good. It crosses to Mangere Bridge, that's good. It goes down to Mangere, that's good. And it goes to the airport, and people go to the airport. That's that's a thing. So this makes sense. But I'll show you why it doesn't make sense shortly, but we'll just review. You, you need an idea what we're talking about. We're talking about modern trams, these, these things. Um, kind of futuristic. We're at the point where they could be built to have no driver so the whole system runs automatically that's actually a thing that they do in some countries now there's a couple of countries that have street level tramways that are entirely automated and they don't have drivers which is interesting i i kind of have some safety concerns about that the the system that they're probably going to build is going to have drivers if you underground the whole thing and have it separated uh from roads where pedestrians and cyclists and cars and trucks and buses are going to be then it's easy to automate it that's called a light metro network if, if you build a light metro a light metro is a metro and it's separate from all the other roads and footpaths and cycleways uh, that's what metros are about they're totally dedicated space where 
only transport of people is being performed. A similar thing that they're building in Montreal, okay, um, REM, uh, this is an automated light rail metro tramway. It's all built on piles and separate from people. It's totally automated. They're building 67 kilometers of tracks for half the amount of money. Twice the amount of tracks for half the amount of money. That's actually one quarter of the price. So this project that they want to build in Auckland is one of the most expensive public transport networks ever built per kilometer in the whole world. Like literally the most expensive project I've ever heard of. So, so that's another reason why we shouldn't be building it in a tunnel. It's extremely expensive. Okay, what else? This is the current existing uh, railway, railway map of Auckland. There you go. That just gives you an idea. We're building a central rail loop. I'll show you another map of that shortly. This is, for context, this is the old tramway map of Auckland. This is the old tramway map from about 1900 to 1950. This was the biggest extent of the of the map. What they're doing by building this light rail is replicating the tramway that used to be on the streets. All of the streets from the CBD to Sandringham Road and Dominion Road and Mount Eden Road are all set for having a tramway down the middle of the road because they were built with a tramway down the middle of the road. Another thing that I want to say is that if we build the tramway down the middle of the road, which is what my preferred option would be because it's going to cost one third of the price, you eliminate all the car parks off these roads. So you, you want to have the tramway in the middle of the road where it has its own lane by itself. It's, the trams are going to be every five minutes. They're going to be so close together. And as it gets busier, they could move the headway to every two minutes and there's some systems that run every 90 seconds so effectively the center lane of the roads that the tramway goes down are going to be a dedicated route for the trams and cars and cyclists and other vehicles are going to be on the lanes on either side and the way to make the tram operate the fastest is to keep all of the other traffic out of the road now so in that case, we want to eliminate all the car parks off these main roads. We can have car parking in the side roads. We can buy a few houses and tear them down and build some car parks if you need some car parks at places. You might need to do that. And, you know, one of the ways to get people out of their cars and onto public transport is have somewhere where they can put their car. If you're going to the shopping streets that are on Dominion Road or shopping areas in Mount Eden or Mount Roskill. People, when they go to the shops to buy their groceries, they often take their car because they buy too much stuff to be able to carry. We don't live in a world where everybody goes to the supermarket every day. A lot of people in New Zealand go to the supermarket once per week. They take their car because that's realistic. That's, that's time management. What's next? This is a map of the existing bus routes in the area where they're going to build the tramway up, up here. Now I haven't, been, I haven't been talking about the bit down in Mangere yet, I'm just talking about the central bit. This brown route through the middle here, the most uh, buses per hour of any bus route in, in Auckland. And so what they're trying to do by building this tunneled tramway this is what the project is they want a tunneled tramway i think that's crazy put it on the street level because that's more flexible and way cheaper to build they they want to build that down the middle of sandringham road sandringham road is not the road with the most buses dominion road is the road with the most buses the bus routes go down here and then they split and go around the suburb down the bottom the other couple of routes, this this blue route through Sandringham and this other blue route, kind of turquoise route through Mount Eden, they're also pretty busy, but the bulk of the traffic is down the middle. So if you're going to build something, build it down the middle of Dominion Road. If you're going to tend to one side or the other, go via Mount Eden and 
and three kings because this this area has more buses per hour than this area here. There's a cluster of activity up here because there's a big shopping mall and that's why the orange bus route and this um, purple and pink bus route uh, hover around around this area. We want to look at transport times. Now the, this this route, the, this, this transport system that they're looking at, this thing here, it goes to the airport. So they're saying that um, city, city centre to Mangere in 32 minutes. And it says, turn, turn up and go, trains every five minutes. So it said, city centre to Mangere in 32 minutes. You might notice that Mangere is here. That's not the airport. There's a bit more of the track here. So when you look at the track, there's sort of like a about a quarter of it to there, another quarter of it to here, another quarter of it to here, and the last quarter down here. Um, so the time to the airport is not going to be 30 minutes from the central city. It's going to be 40 or 45 minutes. Because this part in light grey is tunnelled underground, but this part is overground, but it's going to have interference with other traffic in some locations, and especially as you get down here, I think it will have more and more interference with traffic. So this part of the route will be slower to, to, to cross than this part of the route here. This will be the bit that's fastest. There's also a thing that this map looks very linear and straight and they've drawn a straight line down here but I suspect that the route that is going to take will not be a straight line and I'm going to tell you what I think the route will be shortly. Anyway, when you're looking at, at transport times to the airport, that's about an hour and 23 if you take a train and then transfer across to a bus. Uh, if you uh, go by car at the moment, it's 20, 25 minutes. So there's the, there's an airport bus that takes this route here through the, the, the airport bus that goes on the motorway. Uh, that's, that's called the Sky Bus. There you go there. It does a little loop around the middle of the city, picks people up from hotels, and then goes down to the airport. It, it's saying 30 minutes. So if you are in the middle of the city and you want to get to the airport fast as possible, a taxi or the bus is actually going to be way faster. It's probably going to be 20 minutes faster and it probably always will be 20 minutes faster. Of course, if you're a tourist and you took an overground tram, that would be the best way to orientate yourself in the city when you arrive as a tourist. This is a map. I'm going to explain what this is. It's the current existing Auckland Rail Network. And then I'll show you where the new tramway is going to go. And then I'll show you where the alternative of the tramway is going to go. And I'll show you that in another video. Follow the links in the video, I guess.